Coming up on today's show, GMC unveils the SUV variant of the Hummer EV and shows where it varies from its pickup sibling. Tesla yet again breaks new records with its first quarter production delivery, and bi-directional charging is finally coming to all MEB-based Volkswagen cars next year. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to Tea and Transport Evolved News. I'm back after a week off and a whirlwind tour to Southern California. It was great to meet so many of you en route, and I even had a couple of you chase me down on the freeway to wave at me from your car. In a nice way, of course. Hi! This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Stick around until the end of the show to find out how joining the EAA can help you finance your own clean energy or transportation purchase. We start today with the official unveiling of the Hummer EV SUV last weekend. Time to coincide with the NCAA Final Four tournament, the SUV sibling to the already unveiled Hummer pickup is, frankly, another exercise in excess. In addition to a choice of double-stacked Ultium battery packs and 830 horsepower or 619 kilowatts if you prefer, the Hummer EV SUV features the same WTF mode as the pickup, which GMC says stands for what's to freedom, but we all know what it really means. Then there's power everything, including power folding seats, not to mention cameras everywhere, off-road extract mode, and four-wheel steering. For an EV entering the marketplace, it is certainly over the top. But for a relaunch with EV power, well, it's certainly on brand and on point. While I was away in California, Kia revealed its first e-GMP-based electric car in the form of the all-new Kia EV6. And I've got to say, it's quite a looker, especially its range-topping GT variant. With the 800-volt architecture offering super-fast charging, advanced driver assistance technology, and the same vehicle-to-load capabilities we saw in the recently revealed Hyundai Ioniq 5, because they're based on the same platform, there's a lot to like in this car. A choice of 58 kilowatt hour or 77.4 kilowatt hour battery packs, and a choice of all or rear wheel drive variants give lots of flexibility for buyers, while its GT variant has a sprint time of just 3.5 seconds. I think this means it will become something of a halo car for the Kia EV family. It'll go on sale later this year. Last week was the end of March, and the end of the first quarter of the year, and that of course meant Tesla pushed its quarterly delivery estimates. While these figures are technically preliminary, Tesla has a reputation for being really accurate in its estimates, and this time these figures show an impressive new record. In total, Tesla made 180,338 Model 3 and Model Y combined during the quarter and delivered 182,780 Model 3 and Model Y combined. It made no Model S or X during the quarter as it was retooling for the refreshed variants, but it did manage to deliver 2,020 of the outgoing Model S and X that it had in inventory. Both figures are a record for the company, being a little more than the Q4 figures from last year. This weekend, the new season of the FIA Formula E World Championship kicks off, and this season, there's a new safety car, the Mini Electric Pace Setter. Inspired by the John Cooper works, it's essentially a hot hatch variant of the already fun Mini Cooper SE, and features all of the extras required of a safety car. BMW is clear in its press release announcing the new safety car that it hasn't built this vehicle for public roads, but says, quote, it does reveal one of the directions we could take with the electrification of the JCW brand. Take from that what you will, but I think it means that Mini is heading towards a planned all-electric future, hot hatch, road legal, John Cooper works Mini. I think it's something we should most certainly be looking forward to. If you've been paying attention, you might have picked up on the fact that we had an Archimoto FUV last week on a very short-term loan, and as such, we're going to be publishing a review based on our initial impressions very shortly. But this week, there's some more news from Archimoto, namely that it's just published its 2020 financials and hired a chief international business officer. The former categorically disproved some pretty insane and insidious claims being made by an Archimoto short this week, who was trying to imply that the firm had been lying to investors about orders and only delivered a few FUVs. The latter highlights that Archimoto is readying itself to open up international orders for the FUV. I'm not going to preempt my review, but let's just say as a biker, I was surprised at just how much I enjoyed myself, and I might want one. 
Last November, BMW Motorrad showcased a prototype scooter called the Definition CE04 Concept, a vehicle which the brand said was near series production at the time. This week, we learned that that is indeed true, with new design IP filings from Europe showing that BMW has locked the electric scooter design in and is now edging into series production. The overall shape, which reminds me of the Sinclair C4, is largely unchanged, with only a few tweaks to ensure it meets all road legal requirements requirements. Sadly, the video you're seeing here is of the concept, but frankly, as the design is so similar, I'm curious to know, assuming it's not stupidly expensive, if you put down money on one. Tell me about it below. Cupra, the premium performance sister brand to Seat, which of course is also part of the Volkswagen Group, has been teasing video this week of its first electric car, the Cupra Born, undergoing winter testing. While the Cupra Born is still wearing camouflage, you might recognize the overall shape of the car, and that's because it is essentially built on the same MEB platform as the Volkswagen ID3. And that of course means it's likely to get the same deal of ID3 specifications and battery pack options. Cupra says its latest testing is the result of more than two years of engineering from the brand into the vehicle and promises we'll get to see the final production Cupra L Born in just a few weeks time. As usual, when the reveal happens, we'll be here to bring you all of the important bits. A deal that had been announced back in February last year between Hyundai and Canoe, which was expected to see Hyundai and Canoe work together to build electric vehicles, is now officially dead. As an investor call on Monday this week, which took place without the company's CEO, Canoe chairman Tony Aquila confirmed that the deal was officially off, and while the exact deals of this are not known, Canoe has removed all mention from Hyundai from its online investor relations publications. With the company now on the stock market, thanks to an earlier reverse merger with a SPAC this year, it's not clear what lies in the company's future. But I should probably note that the investor call took place the same day that it was announced that Canoe's CFO had just resigned. Take from that what you will. One of the really cool features of Volkswagen's MEB-based platform, on which the ID3, ID4, and several other Volkswagen Group vehicles are built, is that it was intended to have vehicle-to-grid and vehicle-to-infrastructure capabilities in mind. At launch of both the ID3 and ID4, two-way power transfer wasn't enabled, but this week, Volkswagen confirmed that all of its ID family of electric vehicles, as well as other electric vehicles built on the Volkswagen MEB platform, will feature bi-directional power transfer as of next year. To take advantage of this functionality, you will of course need a charging station that's compatible with the new CCS V2G standard. It's not clear if existing models will be capable of gaining the functionality via an over-the-air software update, but frankly, this is exciting stuff. As I'm sure you're all aware by now, a significant proportion of our team love motorbikes. Both myself and Kate Walton Elliott cut our motorcycle teeth on MZs back in the noughties, and our recent hire winter also has three bikes. So when a new motorcycle crosses our desk, we all get a little giddy. And that's exactly what we did when we learned about New Zealand company FTN Motion. It's Street Dogs Cafe Racer inspired mopeds aren't exactly fast, but they certainly look the part. And the company has just closed a successful $500,000 Kiwi investment round that was oversubscribed by about 60,000 Kiwi dollars. Eventually it wants to produce higher power, high speed motorcycles too. And I'd love to put this one through its paces. Gotta love some classic design lines there, right? And now, it's time for short shorts. Chinese tech giant Xiaomi has announced it's investing a total of 10 billion US dollars to enter into the electric car marketplace. It will spend the money on a subsidiary firm seeking to get in on the EV action, but right now very else little is known. Hyundai's luxury market Genesis has revealed a new concept car in the form of the Genesis X concept. Designed as an EV-based GT, it hints at what we can expect from the company in the future, and I guess it's probably going to be based on the eGMP platform. A special off-menu variant of the Tesla Model 3 with just 151 kilometers of range, 93 miles, is now available on Tesla's Canadian website. It's built to allow Canadian customers to have a lower cost Model 3 that satisfies Canadian EV incentive cost rules. BYD says it will begin to sell electric vehicle battery packs to other automakers this year. It's scaled up its EV battery manufacturing business and looks to be chasing the market that is dominated by LG Energy, Cattle, and a few other big names. 
Tesla's Model Y standard range has been given its official EPA rating. At a combined 129 mpge, it is technically one of the most efficient cars in the EPA database. The problem? It's not a car that we're ever going to be able to see anyone ordering. It is technically an off-menu configuration, but Tesla doesn't want to sell any. European Project Flagships is expected to deploy the world's first hydrogen commercial cargo vessel. Owned by a French inland shipping company, it will begin travelling the Seine in Paris, France, and it will be tasked with moving goods along the famous river. Ford has submitted a service bulletin to NHTSA to address an issue with what it says is a small number of Ford Mustang Mark E's that can result in the 12 volt battery draining during high voltage charging, which leaves owners unable to start the car. A fix has been identified and will be rolled out. A Las Vegas business based out of a residential address in Nevada has announced the Cyberlander, a pop-up camper attachment for the Tesla Cybertruck. Since the latter is not even in production, everything is rendered right now, and they want 50 grand for it. Chevrolet confirmed this week that it's readying an all-electric version of its popular Silverado pickup truck for market. It will be built on the same platform as the upcoming Hummer EV pickup and SUV on the same line, and will offer an excess of 400 miles, 643 kilometers per charge. Tesla and its CEO Elon Musk are reportedly losing patience with the amount of red tape that's required in the building process of Tesla's Giga Berlin facility. At the top of the list of gripes appears to be the environmental approvals process, which hasn't been as fast as Tesla wants it to be. Last year, BYD announced its new Blade battery system, which uses a cobalt-free LFP chemistry and cell-to-pack construction. It's pretty cheap compared to previous tech. And this week, it officially started delivering BYD Tang SUVs in Europe fitted with those battery packs. President Biden's massive $2.3 trillion infrastructure and jobs proposal includes more than $100 billion in consumer rebates and upwards of $15 billion US dollars in funds to assist in building out the US's public charging network. However, it still needs to pass Congress. For the fourth time this year, Tesla has changed the price of its Model 3. This time it's increased prices across the board. Its entry-level Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus now starts from $38,490 and comes with a small change in interior design to match Chinese Model 3. As it readies its Aria SUV for market, Nissan confirmed this week that it's looking to build a smaller, more compact size SUV for the European market. It's expected to be about the same size as the Nissan Juke and may include all-wheel drive tech. The recently appointed EPA administrator, Michael Regan, has wasted no time in announcing the EPA's intention to do away with President Trump's rollback of emission standards, instead pushing for tighter emission standards across all new cars in the US from July this year. Mercedes-Benz has officially revealed specifications of its upcoming EQS electric sedan, with its range-topping model offering in excess of 385 kilowatts at the wheels and up to 770 kilometers, 478 miles of range. It's going to be a big car. The California Public Utilities Commission is readying itself to study whether vehicle-to-grid provision within the state could help the state become more resilient and cleaner with its grid. California's electrical grid has become increasingly overloaded in recent years. Apple has announced a massive new energy storage project that will be using Tesla Megapacks to store up to 240 megawatt hours of energy from its solar farm in Northern California. Apple wants to be 100% carbon neutral by 2030. Tesla has officially delayed the launch of its redesigned Model S and Model X, and as such has begun pushing back customer deliveries. Customers who had previously expected their cars to arrive last month or this can now expect them to arrive sometime between May and July. MG has unveiled a new concept car called the MG Cyberster. It's due to get its official auto show debut in Shanghai later this month, but it previews a powerful sports car that the company says could enter into production in the near future. A UK company called Libertine has announced the development of a new two-stroke hybrid truck engine designed to operate with bioethanol. It says the engine could pave the way for range extending in electric big rigs that doesn't require them to burn petrol or diesel. AMG has confirmed that its future does indeed include electric vehicles. 
During a press event this week, Mercedes-Benz Performance Arm says that it's focusing on building both high-performance hybrids and high-performance electric variants of popular Mercedes-Benz models. Rivian has unveiled its Rivian service plan, and it's pretty much the same as Tesla's. Remote diagnostics, mobile service vans, Rivian-owned service centers, and a loaner program so you don't have to get a gas guzzler when your Rivian needs some TLC in the shop. Lordstown Motors, with great fanfare, has officially revealed its first two beta Lordstown Endurance pickups, which were just produced last week. I'd love to get excited about them, but frankly, there's still a lot of smoke and mirrors going on here, and I've actually seen very little actual prototype engineering on display. Nissan reached a new milestone at the end of March in Japan, a total of half a million e-Power Series hybrid sales. The problem? The e-Power vehicles are now being sold in preference to its all-electric models, which are slumping in sales volumes. And those are your short shots. There will be more next week. The Nissan LEAF is now more than 10 years old. But while some other electric vehicles of similar ages seem to be doing just fine on their original battery packs, many Nissan LEAFs aren't because of a refusal by Nissan to provide LEAFs with adequate thermal management when they were being designed. Of course, Nissan will send you a replacement battery pack, but prices for that are insane, even if you can get hold of one, which is where the growing cottage industry of aftermarket battery replacements come in. And this week, our buddies over at Fully Charged did an amazing video covering Cleverly EV in the UK and its aftermarket upgrade service for UK Leafs. Based on the excellent work by Muxan in the Netherlands, it's well worth a watch. And if you're a Leaf owner, we think that you'll want to know about our own video covering Nissan Leaf battery upgrades coming soon. So watch this space. And finally, as our cars get smarter and smarter, there are a host of great things we can look forward to. Safer driving, thanks to semi and fully autonomous features, remote unlocking and preconditioning, thanks to telematics, and even keyless ignition from your phone, not to mention over the air software updates. But there are apparently some downsides, at least according to a social media post that's doing the rounds. According to one Facebook user from Utah, a friend of his is a specialist in recovering repossessed vehicles and recently had to repossess a Tesla whose owners had stopped making payments. Allegedly, and I should point out that we've not been able to corroborate this story, Tesla located the car in question, backed it out of its parking space, honked the horn, and then unlocked the doors to facilitate the car's towing. And I've got to admit, that's pretty scary. And on that sobering note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's roundup. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EAA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make that switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator if you're already an EV driver, and it can even point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EAA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. We'd love it if you'd comment and subscribe to the channel, as well as consider supporting us using one of the links below. There's also a link to our Discord chat room, which is great fun and free to join, so give it a go if you'd like. And don't forget to check out our merch at our Redbubble TE store. I'll be back next week, but until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, stay safe, and keep evolving.